Hello. Today I'd like to talk briefly about generating C++ code in Embedded Coder and then also introduce a natural way to model classes within Simulink. So model-based design is meant to operate within the software engineering world and we're seeing more and more applications in that world utilizing C++ code. Here you see some example platforms that are primarily or exclusively using C++. Uh, and, and one of the reasons that's happening is because from a realization standpoint from the designer's perspective, it's often nice to design in an object-oriented manner. So we want to describe uh, how to do that within Simulink. So just an, as an example, you could take uh, an application that has multiple queues and different implementations of queues. And uh, when you're designing that and writing code for that, you could simply instantiate three separate queues with, uh, of these two different types. And then with, when you're calling into the different methods for those different queues, you could do it very naturally here. So there's established advantages to uh, object-oriented realization. Now, in 2017b, uh, we have a lot of customers using different modeling styles. Here's three uh, examples of uh, cogeneration modeling styles that are primarily used by our customers. Uh, in 17b, it's now possible to generate C++ code from each of these modeling styles and if they're configured consistently you can even generate the same code with, with the public methods that you'd expect and private methods that you, you'd expect. Uh, so now getting into the realization within Simulink, uh, a core technology to enable that is the Simulink function which was introduced in uh, 14b. At that time Simulink functions were, were global. You could call them with a function caller accessing that global name. In 16A, there was an enhancement to add scoping of, of functions with subsystems. And then now in 17B, you can scope your functions with models. And along with that, it's possi possible to instantiate those models multiple times. So now you can have multiple instantiations of your Simulink function. So if you want to model a class within Simulink, you can do that with, with Simulink functions. Uh, so it's very natural here you can see two Simulink functions and then an initialization system. So these, these three functions become public methods of this class. Uh, a third Simulink function is scoped with a, sim with a subsystem and it becomes a private method of that class. So if now we want to uh, use this class within an algorithm, I have a, a simple algorithm here that's processing uh, push and pull requests. Uh, and with a simple switch statement to determine which queue is going to be operated on. You instantiate two separate queues with model reference blocks and then you can call into those separate instantiations with, with a qualified no dot notation using a function caller. So this is a very natural way and you could you generate the code that you'd expect for C++. So this is a purely modeling semantic which also applies to C code. So this is not just a C++. Uh, uh, modeling style that also applies to C code. Um, so there's documentation in 17b that describes the new scoping uh, functionality that's available with models and then in 18a there's a very nice concise uh, tabular format that describes the different encapsulation uh, available within Simulink and, and what, how that affects the visibility and accessibility of those functions. Thank you. <laughs>